Hello, and welcome to OT the Podcast. <laughs> We're here talking about watches, time, and how we spend it. My name's Felix Schultz, and I'm with... I'm Andy Green. How are you going, Felix? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just going into an AMSR you're, space. You're in an odd mood. Uh, it's a rainy afternoon. Pew, 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 pew. What it's, are we here to do? What are we, what are we talking about, Andy? A few things. There's a little bit of watch uh, newsy stuff to catch yep, up sure. on. We've got some watch admin. A lot of stuff to catch up on. Yep, yep. Uh, we've got a great watch matchmaker Oof. with a man named Wing. Nice. But do you know what I'm most excited about? Let me, let me guess. What? Someone's picked a watch. Dan... Well, what's he picked, Felix? We'll find out at the end of the episode. Oh, when you're going to make open... you wait. Yeah. When you I open up my what, when I wait, when I open up my WhatsApp messages and I see what he's, he's given some in depth notes, he's given feedback. Okay. He hasn't really. He's just given me some. Because I have no idea. I think we put th- put forward some uh, interesting contenders. Yeah. But... This was uh, like Brightlings and uh, Planet Oceans, and you had the uh, JLC uh, Seamaster. Yeah, it was a good a good bunch. Anyway, we'll cover that off in a second. All right. Some stuff's been happening. What's been happening? You want you want to kick off? Yeah, I'll kick off. Uh, some smaller sins. Oh yes, released. Oh, the Sin U fifty. Now, uh, I, this is a deeply personal watch for me because the Sin U one mm. was. Uh, I used to, you, do you know I used to have a watch matchmaking service of my own back in the early to mid two thousand and tens called the Tailored Watch. I did. Uh, one of the first watches I bought someone was the Sin U one, and I really? love it very very much. It's a beautiful watch, but it's a big boy. They, they're always beefy boys. Yeah, not anymore. Now, Sin, Sin U50, 500 metres, 41 mil, thin, but under, under 10 mil, I think. Mm. Great watch. I, I think it's a belter. Comes in the tegumented steel, is it? Uh, the bezel's tegumented. Bezel's tegumented. Uh, which is, uh, but I mean, they're tough. Like, they're tough. And I really, what, what I think I like most about the Sins is the dial design. Like, those, the handset is like nothing else. We've got super big blocks. Striking. Striking and German. Yeah. Very powerful. Have you, you I'm guessing you visited their website uh, recently, I think so. It's so German. It's yes. just like here is the information, and here yes. are the pictures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, it's you know, I think they spend their efforts making watches rather yeah. than maybe websites. But I think they're great. They're really beautiful watches, and you know, water resistant to like five hundred meters, yeah, five hundred as opposed to a thousand for the U one. Yeah, yeah, tough. Uh, Submarine the money, steel. The money is sort uh, of probably like four K. I think 4K Aussie. Aussie. Yeah. Uh, so around that that mark. But and obviously, so it's the size. So they're forty one now. Yeah, yeah, and slender. Slender's the real, the real thing. So mm. they come in black and steel, and steel with a black bezel, which is a weird look, but nice. Yeah, those, those hands with that sort of the red. They're like half red and then mm. half crispy white loom, and then the second hands is red as well. It's just like. Um, it's like a you know those mundane watches, mm. the Swiss railway ones. Imagine that on steroids, built for you know German commandos. Mm. I That's feel like I'm going to hand my wallet over to the watch. <laughs> There's two of them just looking at me right now, and it's like, <laughs> okay, I don't want any trouble. Yeah, if you want your money, here you go. <laughs> All right, and then I'm scaring away. Um, Very cool. On a, speaking about black watches, how's yes. that for a segue? Uh, Hublot. Boom. They've done a little uh, little limited edition with one of my personal favourite fashion designers, Yoji Yamamoto. <laughs> Who is that? Japanese fashion designer. They he, did some. He's cool. an OG. He's in his seventies. OG, 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 OG. Some of his brands, Y Three. Uh, yeah, yeah, like a lot of that sort of um, body shape stuff in the eighties, like really uh, cool things. And I think Hublot excel at um, partnerships. Like they, they're sort of one for everyone. And I think this is nice. Like mm. the watches are just blacked out versions of i think that's a gmt there maybe yeah completely blacked out with his uh signature slash logo on the sapphire crystal which looks cool just cool i mean it's just a lovely that is a gmt yeah yep that's a very cool watch yeah uh so that's happened what else has happened oh you've you've another black watch i know three for three what's this one this is the bell and ross hud or you know heads up display so it's all black again yep uh with a green Heads up display, cockpit vibe. Like a heads up, that's like the new generation, like in their helmet, they've got computer yes. stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, so if you think like Terminator, the Terminator sees, yeah. exactly. Yeah, except not 1982. Yeah, target acquired. <laughs> with that, yeah. So it's, it's like uh, a green sort of radar with the, the, the bright fluoro green, I guess, yeah. to describe. It's really cool. And I think it's 42 millimetres, so... You 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 surprise me sometimes. I know like, I this this surprised me that you were into this. I I'm, I asked for the price and the size. I was like, well, you were that uh, much into yeah, it. Yeah, fifty nine hundred AUD. That's about the my limit on like a fun casual spend. Not casual. No, but, but like, like a, you know, not not. A, I have to think about this really hard. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think that is it's sick, fun. Yeah, very fun. Uh, another one that I've sort of seen is, mm. is not black. 
Um, and I thought, uh, it, I found it really interesting because I've sort of seen a few of the OG ones around, speaking of them, is Nevada Grenchen. Do you know those guys? It's an old brand. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yep. So you're, you're sort of one of those brands that disappeared probably in the, in the 70s or the mm. 80s. Um, they made a bit of, you know, dive watches and sort of tooly chronographs. Yep. They're back. They've come back and they, they look nice. They've actually come back? Well, I mean, I think they're launching on Kickstarter and, you know, they've got a couple of models and there's a lot of potential there in it. Like, it's an old name, but there's a fairly strong catalogue and a, a bit of collector interest. Okay. All right, I'm so having I, a look I, on their Insta now. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, They seem pretty true to the original. Yeah, like and they're, they're doing sort of chrono, the sort of aviation-ish chronos at the moment, but I think there's enough uh, dive. There's some solid dive stuff. Old um, James Dowling, uh, uh, Mr. Yes, Rollins yes. has been tweeting some stuff. Okay, the sea, stuff. the sea Diver. That's one of the models. Yeah, so it's like a chronograph diver. That's very cool. And I was thinking, are there any other... What do you think about that sort of bringing a brand back from the grave, I guess, or... Mm. What do you think? Does it work? When does it not work? Mixed emotions. I think if it if it works, it works. Mm. And when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. An example, I'm going to say it, Ike Pod. Do you don't think it works? They're doing the Kickstarter at the yeah, moment. Yeah, it's yeah. just completely different. It's a different value proposition. They're sort of a yeah. bunch cheaper. Then they're never going to be as cool. Like that's it's, one where it's I'm, really tough. I think uh, that's that's the sort of the one I immediately thought of as well. Mm. And I see what you're saying because. But they wouldn't exist. Like you cannot, yeah. like Icapod in the day were expensive watches. Yeah. And you're not going to convince someone to, to drop, you know, 10 grand on that, on the new one. So I see why they're, where they're going. But That's true. Um, People but, still are dropping big money. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. They're, I mean, the did we, did we, was it Kanye? Did we talk about Kanye wearing one We, the we talked day? about yeah. Kanye wearing it. And then I saw Matt Farah, who yeah. hosts the, the Smoking Tire podcast yeah. and, and YouTube channel, and he went and bought one of the all black ones yeah. after seeing the GQ article and just being like, oh my God, what is this? My mate Tom's got one. He's got a, one of the chronopods. So, um, I, yeah. hadn't seen, I hadn't seen the all black sort yeah. of, I think it's like a DLC coding. Yeah, I mean, um, they, they, they did some funky stuff. I'm waiting for Elaine Silberstein to, to yeah. hit that sort of height. But who else? Are there any other sort of brands that you'd love to see back? I think there's one that um, uh, I think everyone would love to see back. And I, surely someone has to have bought the rights for it. What's Can that? You, uh, bloody the, the one that Hadinki's all about. Oh, what are they called? Mm. The one you'd love to see come back. Yeah. Oh, really God, there's a you in there. Oh. Universal Genève. Oh, of course. Yeah, 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 sorry. Very cool. Yeah. Those are, and again, they've got a very strong collector market. But mm. then, you know what? It's hard because brands like Eberhard have such strong vintage classic models. And I think they still exist. I believe so. Now. A turner. Like what, where, I mean, it's, it's, I think we're entering a time when mm. then we're going to see less watch brands more than rather than more. Mm. So maybe it's not the time to, to relaunch that risky 70s cool brand. Exactly. What else? Uh, Bremont. Oh, you're our friends at Bremont. They've released a online configurator tool. Have you played around with it yet? No, I think I'm doing that on Monday. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So there's a thousand different combinations. They introduced some new, I guess they're technically new models um, for the MB2 and 3, I think. Is it an update? Like a um... No day of the week. Uh-huh. So just the... The date. The date. Oh, that's a bit sad. So mine like has the day date. Well, it, it kind of looks a bit cleaner to be fair. Okay. And I think a blue dial. And then mm. the configure, a bunch of new barrels and straps and that sort of stuff. So you can, I think, make at least 1,000 different combinations. Of Should it? you though? Well, I had to play. I had to play uh, and made a. It was a black DLC coating, black dial uh, with a pink barrel, which I thought Ooh, very cool. Now you've got my attention. Yeah, I do. And a black rubber strap. And then I saw Mr. Adam Craniotes put up on his Instagram stories the exact same configuration. Pink or pur- did he do pink or purple? It's a pinky purple. Oh, okay. it's the same. It's the same one, but it's it's like a hot pink. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, and I said, of all the configurations in all the worlds, uh-huh. we both matched. Are you gonna get it? Uh, well, I, I did message Giles and said I might have to send mine in and swap it for pink. And oh, it, of course. He just said, ha ha, thumbs up. So, well, there you go. Ha ha, thumbs happening. up. I think that means it's the contract is in the works. Contract signed. Um, uh, cool. Anything cool, else cool, before cool, cool. we uh, jump into the next, the next phase of our uh, podcast journey? Get an important. I'm looking up. I'm looking message. up one of my things. I don't know if you would have seen this. I chucked an okay. extra something I've liked in the mix. Okay, well, should I? No, I'm, I'm good to go. I found it. All right. It's just an Instagram page. But I'm going to start off, off with my first one. I've got a question. I'm going to start with a question. All right. Are you of an age where you're familiar with Choose Your Own Adventure books? I am. You should get this email. It's called Adventure Snack. Adventure Snack. Adventure Snack. Okay. And it is exactly what it says on the email. It's, right. it's, uh, it's on the Substack where I've got my Right on Time newsletter. Nice plug. 
I liked it. Um, <laughs> so it's a twice monthly newsletter and basically it's a choose your own adventure. Okay. It comes into your inbox. It's really, really stupid. Like one of them is a duck that finds a genie in a bottle. I got one the other day. It's where a jetpack arrives at your door. Okay. Uh, right. Or there's one, you know, there's sort of really, there's one where there's a floating pizza and they're like three little choices. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the choices are like, how many tabs do you have open in your browser at the moment? Oh, okay. One to five. Click this one. Ten to, like, so all the, how tall are you? And, Okay, and it'll fun. it'll go down sort of silly paths. And it's just, I think it's five minutes that I've always got, I'm going to click this and I'm going to see what happens. It's an absolute waste of time, but it's beautiful. You should uh, do an Instagram story of the next one, the next email to show the fans. Is that allowed? Like right now? No, 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 not right now, but the next email that comes through. Put it up on Insta. Yeah, okay. Show us, show yeah, us yeah, what the, it is. the last one was a jetpack where um, you, land your, you land your jetpack on your irritating neighbor's Escalade. Very relevant. Yeah, that that's speaks to my life. The other one I sort of came up with because uh, I saw some beautiful Instagram stories is my mate uh, Michael, who's a Melbourne guy. Yep. He has a page, and I never know how to say this, on Instagram called The Curier. Yep. How do you spell it? T-H-E-C-U-R-I-A-E. We Would will you? link that up. We definitely will. Would you say Curier? Yes. Uh, so it's basically interior design and architecture, contemporary design review. Mm-hmm. But he did a really, really cool sort of Instagram story where it's sort of like a magazine and it's he gets some quite big names about asking them sort of their favourite places, their favourite things. Okay. Uh, and it's just, you know, I'm just going to show you right now. It's just really nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just beautiful. Well, you know, stories. Yeah, it's like, like, that's Julian Moore. And I, I don't know if he, I assume he asked Julian Moore, like. Oh, very cool. Just really nice photography and it's very sort of. Um, the man has taste. Yeah, very, very wallpaper meets Stephen Pulverin. So who is it, Michael? Uh, Michael, who's an ex panorama guy. Yes, yes, yes. You okay. Yep, we've so. Met. Okay, so you've got two recos. Now is the first one Adventure Snack. Is that free? Is that paid? I think, there's a, I think there might be a paid one where you get bonus stuff, but okay. you can just sign up and you get a few anyway. So. All right, so we'll link that up and we'll yep. link up the Curier. Yep, I thought I'd go different. And what about you? Have you mixed it up by going with something really left centre? Uh, it's stick, not cooking. Stick in- Sticking to your uh, your guns. It's not cooking. It's not. Uh, it's not something on Netflix. It is a short film. Mm. It's called Roof. Ruff. Love at the Red Line, and it is a film by Roof Automobile. So not Ruff. Love at the Red Line. Roof. Uh, it's a very serious what's, German. What's film. Roof? So Roof is a uh, automotive, uh, I guess, manufacturer. They're technically a manufacturer, and what they do is they make original vehicles using unmarked Porsche chassis, uh, known as bodies in white. Thank mm-hmm. you, Wikipedia. And different to like other car modification like, services. Like Singer? Is that? Yeah, sort of. It's a, it's a bit of a weird one when it comes to like, are you a manufacturer or a modifier? Uh-huh. Uh, but because these are blank chassis and they that build. Have never been. Never been a car. They build it uh, and all of the parts and everything basically better. And they've, they've been around for, I think, 80 years or something, about an 80 oh. year history in Germany. And they put together this film. It's a 30 minute YouTube clip or on Instagram or wherever you want to find it. I'll link it up. But uh, what is special is that they don't, they use their own parts and they make everything, nearly everything themselves versus, you know, rebadging or disassembling and being officially a car manufacturer is quite cool. Uh, anyway, so this is a 30 minute film that looks at sort of the iconic history of this, uh, of this local repair shop in Pfaffhausen, Pfaffenhausen, Pfaffenhausen and how they kind of topples uh, the uh, the establishment if you mm. uh, if you call it. and just focusing on like a love of cars so it's a it's a bit of like a, a combination between the the current uh, i guess owner and and ceo and and his staff and then a few sort of high profile uh car enth- enthusiasts mm. sorry uh, like spike ferriston ted gashu etc uh all kind of sharing their take on what roof uh means to them mm. something really really cool is uh is the head of marketing and the the uh, alois alois uh, his wife, who's the owner uh, and head of marketing, kind of talks about how they managed to get this car into Gran Turismo. Well, oh, that's cool. Very cool. So Gran, Gran Turismo 2, I think. And they have the producer of the game as well. Mm. And they, they said, we, we would love to, would like, love to be in there and love the opportunity, but they insisted on being the highest uh, option and level for the car. So if you had like the Porsche 911, mm. the, the highest you could kind of modify. Unlock as the game goes on. It was the ultimate reward. And now they kind of talk about what that meant for like all of these kids in the 80s, uh, you know, I guess it's 90s. GT2 is fairly old now. Yeah, yeah. 90s, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Um, kind of came up playing this game and it yeah. was like the aspirational car huh. in the game. Marketing and they, gold. And I mean, they probably make like 30 or 40 cars a year. Yeah. Are they all Porsche? Yes. Yep. Is, are they endorsed? Can I, I'm sorry to... Are they endorsed by Porsche or is there like a tension there? Or I think it, I think it's a... 
it's a mutual appreciation like to get okay. those uh, bodies in white is that have to be i guess yeah I'm not, I'm not it's not an easy sure. thing to do like maybe. it's not an easy thing to do yeah. uh, and you can't not respect them mm. so i think that they, this would be one kind of manufacturer that would get their respect uh so anyway so they inserted themselves in the game insisted on being that the highest level uh and it and it kind of looks looks back on that it looks at the importance of you know this 1980s film that they put together so they've got a bit of a history of like really kind of clever german marketing and it was called roof fascination mm. uh, which is another another sort of short film i'll link up mm. and that focused on their 19 i think i think it's 1980s car called the yellow bird the cta yellow bird which it, it's sort of the car that really made a big splash and this was sort of you know what the guys in the in the film anyway called the first sort of viral car video and it was sort mm. of like a vhs that people were like passing around and no way became a thing and it That's was all cool. through the magazines and it was just this like really special uh i guess film and so love at the red line is is the sort of update and really just cool like really just kind of cool I'll, to think. i will legitimately check that out yeah. I know, I, often i say i'll check it out and i have no interest in checking it out i just say it because we're on the podcast and we have to say that but i'm genuinely interested yeah and to keep it like family owned for such yeah. a long time and to stay true i think is is so rare it's and you've got this German. yeah and then employees it's like you know the the head carriage maker has you know been around for 30 years Klaus and this was dad did it and yeah He's been around for 20 years and this guy's been around yeah. for 40 years. Is there a watchmaking equivalent? Like, who do you, th- like, if this is. Mm, not probably not in the modify something that exists, yeah. but in terms of like a manufacturer, I guess. Like, maybe it's like um, one of like the dial makers. To or be honest, a- Patek Philippe, it's probably similar in terms of like you can't really buy them. They sell them for sort of 900 US. MBNF, maybe? I don't know. Not, not not old enough. Not enough sort of. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess it's almost like a Patek type. Uh, or like Hermes doing the the double dials and all that. This that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. something yeah. like that. It's just it's, it's a really special phenomenon. Like that in itself, it's kind of like hmm. yeah, it's crazy. And because Roof have put it together, there's like thirty years of footage that they've kind of snipped in. You know, there's one guy snipped in. Snipped in. Uh, one of their race car drivers who they sponsored at the time jumps out of an airplane. Uh, skydives with a, with a yeah w- w- with a roof kind of flag attached yeah, yeah, to him yeah. lands at i think it's called the race of america gets into the car and then races and it was all like you know 1990s publicity like it's just genius it's super cool it's super cool yeah. so yeah that's my recommendation roof love at the red line we'll link cool. it up cool 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 uh what's moving on from fancy cars to fancy watches boy do we have a banging watch matchmaker today. You, you got excited on this one. I think this is the first time that we've sort of uh, we've been spent a lot of time sort of doing not not the lower end, but like the re- the realistic yeah. end. This is sort of flexing the the wallet a little bit. Wow, it's a big wallet. So we've got this lovely long me- uh, message, uh, or I guess a brief from Wing. We've shortened it down, uh, but I guess here's the key point. So, hi guys, love the show. Obviously, you do. Thank you, thank you for listening. Uh, 2020 has been a very interesting year. Uh, I've had a lot of time to think about what I really want. Uh, I hate to sound cliche, uh, cliche, but really quality over quantity. Uh-huh. Great. The days of having 20 Omegas in the collection are kind of over. Sure. Amen. Uh, also, there's been a fair few Rolex sports models at the moment, so maybe something from another brand. So okay. he's done his dash with the Omega. He's got, I think he's probably still got Rolex and Omega in the mix. Oh, he's got loads. Yeah, yeah. He's listed what he's so got. He doesn't he's got, want, he's not interested in that. He just doesn't want to bring another one. Okay. So he's looking for something that's not boring, a bit rugged that can cop a bit of, you know, moisture, bump or two. He's not going to wear it to the gym, but, you know, he doesn't want to have to worry about, you know, scratches uh-huh, and scuffs. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, he wants a piece with a bit of gravitas. Mm. Doesn't have to impress everyone, but needs to be a good looking piece. For example, no <laughs> P01s. That's personal taste, Wing, but uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, so he can wear it to shoot around a pool with them. A round of pool with mates or to, you know, to go see the banker about a new loan to pay for the watch. Uh, so what he's got his eye on is the Rolex uh, yellow gold Oyster Flex Daytona yeah. and the blue dialed white gold. So let's not mention those. Because I think also I love that he's got, I'm really over Rolex. I've got so many Rolex sports models. Here are two Rolexes I want. Um, yeah. <laughs> that, people are confused and that's why they email us. Yeah, uh, sure. We're here, to okay. We're here to remove those. Uh, now here's the really exciting thing. Sure. The budget is forty to eighty thousand Australian dollars. Bing, big, big bag to spend. Yeah, you can get you can get a lot of fun stuff for that sort of money. So that's sort of twenty five to fifty sure. US dollars for the the international guys. Uh, he likes Patek, he likes AP, and he obviously likes Rolex and Omega. Sure. Pre owned, he's not so keen, but you know, brand new's probably the preference. Uh, no vintage pieces. He's already too far down that rabbit hole. Uh-huh. He does not want it. Uh, precious metal or stainless steel is fine. Yeah. So for that money, you know, you'd be hoping to get into precious metal. Well, uh, 
No manual winds because it drives me nuts. Totally legit. Has to be on a bracelet. Interesting. All right. So we've both picked some uh, some pretty. We've gone. We've we've gone all over the shop. I think. Yeah. I, I think this is good. We might. Uh, we, I think we've got a fantastic discussion coming up. And can I say, this is out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Because I don't normally like I, I cover this stuff and I talk about this stuff, but I don't. It's it's so far out of my my normal that I'm like, oh, well, why would I bother looking at this? You know, mega watch that I'm never going to have. Mm. Oh, this is cool. All right, who's going first? Uh, you go first. I've gone with the obvious one, and with, and I'm going to sort of caveat this with a few things. We uh, we've sort of spoken before. How about we've got a sort of a, a rule about no hype pieces? It's a bit of an unwritten, unsaid rule about yeah. You know, we sort of avoid those obvious. You know, your Royal Oaks, your Nautiluses, your your, your Rolex Steel. This is. Very much borderline, mm. and it's also, I suspect, hard to get. I've heard it is very hard to get, but but I think it's worth putting in there for, because for me, it contextualizes everything else I've done, mm. and I reckon Wing might. Well, let me just say this as well in your defense, it sounds like Wing's probably a good customer, yeah, and his AD might slip in one of these. Yeah, so I don't think it's out of the realms of question that this will happen, but it's 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 a very much. I'm aware that it's a borderline like Mike. All right, I'm on the edge of my seat, Felix. What is the uh, the first watch? A Langens Odysseus oh, in steel. Very nice. So not the one they've just released, but yep. the one on the bracelet because he wants a bracelet. It's 28k euro, super hard to get, but it's a good choice. What do you think? Okay, so it's 28k euro in AUD. It's probably 40. I think it's about 60. Is the Aussie? I could be wrong. I don't, you're not great at conversions, but yeah. No, uh, I just, well, the, it's, not, it's not necessarily a straight uh, conversion either for the Aussie RRPs either. Mm. But I seem to recall it was around that. Let me look it up while you keep talking about this lovely one. So, yeah, just in case you're not familiar with this. So, Lang, it, it was released last year and it drew, caused a bit of a scene because mm. Langer have a history of only doing precious metal watches. And this is steel. It's the first time they've ever done steel. It's not a dress watch. It's a you know a luxury steel sports watch. It's sort of got that integrated bracelet feel, though the the lugs are traditional, so you can pop a you know something else on there if you wanted. It's a beautiful sort of blue dial with a, a day date. Um, you know the big German day date vibes. Uh, there's some some other stuff going on. Just a nice watch. All right, so it's uh, about forty eight. Call it fifty k Aussie. Okay. So it's right forty down mil. the middle. 40, 40 and a half mil, 11 high, so beautiful wear. And I think that gravitas. Yeah. It's a rugged. bigger, isn't it? So it's 40.5, but obviously those lugs are quite long and yeah. straight. So those... I should also say, I haven't seen any of these watches that I've just picked yeah. IRL. Maybe the last one. That's how hard it is to get. But yeah, it's also... So I just I think it's a really interesting choice. I think it's worth considering. It would have to be in his consideration set anyway. Mm. So this is a larger watch. Than he probably is used to, but he, no, he he's, mentioned he says AP. Like he's, he's got AP, but he's got a seven and a half inch, so he's got a pretty big meat hook, similar to you. Sure, yeah, I, I don't, I, you know, I don't think there's any issue with size on this. No, 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 not for wing, hundred yeah. uh, percent. Yeah. Uh, that is a, yeah, it's a cracker. I mean, I would love to actually see one. Yeah, uh, and the next one I think is one that I sort of thought about a lot in the relationship because it bears more than a passing resemblance to the mm. Odysseus, but I think in some ways it works a bit better. Uh, I'm talking about a watch called the Urban Jurgensen 1 GMT. Talking about this brand a little bit lately. Yeah, I think they're sort of, uh, they're benefiting from the halo effect of other super high-end sport, like them and Laurent Ferrier sort of getting that that gloss from, you know, the overflow of the you know, difficulties obtaining other hype pieces. Mm -hmm. And I'll convert the price for you. It's 53,400-ish, so mid-50s yeah. Aussie dollars. Yeah, so uh, this is a GMT, blue dial again. It's got dual pushers on the, the left to sort of adjust the, the time zones. It's again, a, a beautiful steel bracelet with really polished center links that are like uh, almond shaped almost, like mm. elongated egg sort of really, really handsome look. Big, big sort of, is that a Breguet style hour hand? It's got a like that big sort of open half moon situation going on. Yeah, very big. Yeah, it's a really interesting looking piece, but it's really complex case, seven piece construction, 41 again, 12.1 high. Uh, well, no, so 12.1 at the bezel, 13.8 at the dome of crystal. That is... That's quite the dome. Yeah, that's a water resistant 120 metres. Uh, so you can adjust the time quickly with those two pushes on the left hand side. 
I think it's a really interesting piece. This hits uh, this hits quite heavy, and I think yeah, it's steel as well. Sorry, steel, I don't know 120 that. meters water resistance. I mean, that is a lot of money for steel, but you're paying for a brand that is. I mean, and the move special. It's special, I and mean, I think it hits that like it's super super cool. But also, you're not you got to know it's something special, but it's not what every other investment banker has. You know. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I can't say I've ever seen one of these in the country. I mean, when I've you know yeah. been in. The, the UK, um, yeah. Yeah, so I think that's that's an interesting option there. Uh, and the last one I think is the most interesting of all. Here we go. This is an interesting uh, fella. Yeah, I was thinking when we sort of said high-end sports, well, he didn't say sports, but, you know, he said sports in as many other ways. It's assumed. Um, you know, sort of credibility but under the radar, I went to FP Jean. Oh. Because they do some really interesting – I, I was thinking for a while I'd go there sort of super cool court stuff. But then I went to the Octosports ARS2. All right. Describe this watch, Felix. I don't know if I can. Um, there was a yellow dial, like a super bright yellow dial that I was considering, but I thought I'd play it safe and go with the black. Okay. It's, uh, it's just nuts. It's very uh, round. Is it, is it titanium? I should have written that down. I, I bloody didn't. I was <laughs> um, it is a metal of that is titanium or aluminium even. Uh, God, I, I should know this. Weigh seventy five grams, so it's something like you're spending fifty or sixty thousand dollars here. You should, uh... <laughs> <laughs> like I said, this is not my safety zone. Um, but really cool, six day power reserve, wacky dial, like FB Jean dials, especially in their sports stuff, are quite distinctive. Like they don't play the, the safe game. There's like this kidney bean day night indicator, red sub seconds, those classic Jean hands, fonts for days bezel, cr- massive sort of oversized crown at four, uh, integrated sort of s- really slender bracelet that like it goes in and it's yeah. got this rubber on the bracelet. It's, it's a wacky watch and it's... Uh, it's funky. 36,000 francs, including Swiss tax. All right, let me... So that's uh, just under 60,000, Aussie. Yeah. Okay. Cool watch, six days. And I think that the Hourglass, if he's, he's local, the yeah, Hourglass... Yeah, I think yeah, they've got FB. I think they can hook that or, up. Or, you know, just pop over to Singapore for this sort of jam. Okay, very good choices, Felix. What about you, my friend Andrew Green? Andrew Green Life. Uh, well, my first choice is a, uh, a watch I haven't seen. It is a Vacheron overseas, mm. self-winding, mm. ultra-thin. Okay. And this boy is thin. Is this, a, is this complicated or...? Uh, no, it's time only. Ooh. It is $80,100. Australian, mm. so it's a little bit over the budget, but it's a hundred dollars over budget. I think that they can, uh, you know, work a deal out. They'll give him a hat, and this is the grey dial, so this is boutique only. Yep, we've got a boutique. We have a boutique here hey. in Melbourne, Collins Street, and uh, Wing is from Melbourne, so he can uh, he can hit that up for this. Uh, it's got these really nice, slight blue touches on the dial, which mm-hmm. work just in a really subtle but perfect way with the uh, with the grey. Yep. Uh, obviously, there's an exhibition case back, which is stunning. Yep. Now, I said this is a thin fella. He's a 40 millimeter case, 7.5 millimeters thick. Slender boy. Ultra, ultra thin. Yeah, that's. And the other cool thing about this, you can see from the back, mm. not just bracelets. No. No, no. So this, is, this comes with three straps yep. uh, for that money. So you get this stainless steel bracelet, you get a, a gray rubber strap. Nice. Uh, oh, no, oh, this is in white gold as well, sorry. So this is a white gold watch Ooh, okay. for the 80,000. Yep, 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 yep. So, you know, you're not paying for steel. Yep. And a Mississippi Pinnacles alligator strap, which yep. is just American alligator sure. when I Google yes. it. Yes. <laughs> I think that's, that's a weird quirk, I think, of uh, like Swiss French things, as they call it. It's like the subcategory of like... Uh, maybe for, for export reasons, I have to say it's not the super endangered one. It's like the, it's like what its, it's grandfather dinosaur was yep. made from. Sure. Uh, so you get three straps. It's white gold, but aside from the, I guess, bezel, it's like this brush finish mm. to it. And it it's like a really fine grain. It's just really beautiful. Yeah, that's a lovely choice. And I think I was hoping to see it overseas in this this mix. Um, and this is a, a perfect choice. And it's, it's a, the thinness, like normally they're sort of a bit more sporty Bulky. feeling, but this mm. is quite... Some a, of the chronographs are bigger. I mean, the ultra thin is, you know, going to have those same proportions no matter which direction you go. I think getting a boutique only makes it a little bit more special. Yep. Yeah, and certainly I think the, having the boutique in town is a nice thing as well. That's, that makes it easier and makes it a bit more cool. You can go try it on. Yep. Uh, if you're going to spend 80 grand, there's so many different overseas that you can spend perp, 30. Perp, perp cals are out of budget, aren't they? That'd be too much. I think they're like 130 or something. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the perp cal or gold, which is my all-time uh, yeah, sure. grail for this week. Yeah. I'm just <gasps> lusting hard over it. It's about 130, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm shocked. Really? I've skipped forward to your next select. Oh. <gasps> 
And you, you, what have you done, Andy Green? Dog. What have you Let done? Me finish on this Vacheron. Oh my, I can't. I know. I'm shook. It's a no-brainer. I know. I know. So if you can spend eighty grand, I think that getting a white gold Vacheron that is gonna just yeah. Why are you still talking about Vacheron? Love it. All right. Why my next we- choice is a. Uh, it's a two-parter. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Yes. I have a bit of a reputation now as we make our way into this uh, this lovely podcast of blowing a budget or two. And I'm going to say this now. If there's ever a watch to stretch or blow your budget on, I believe that it is this one. Andy Spendy Green. I've blown a, I've blown a little bit over. So How much over? $100 like the last one? <sighs> yeah, okay, it was over on the last one. Uh, $9,250 $9, over. That's... I mean, when you're spending 80 what's 90 <laughs> Like, honestly... <laughs> <laughs> what are the chances that he could get a discount on this watch? No, I don't think. No, this brand doesn't discount. So this is a, uh, a Rolex Oyster Perpetual Day Date 40 uh-huh. in platinum ice blue dial. So not only have you gone over budget, yeah. you've broken the rules. No, because you know what? You can. This is not impossible. Okay. A, a $90,000 Day Date is... It, it's, it can happen. He might wait six months. We'll now wait a little bit longer, but he can get this. Okay, okay. He's a good Rolex customer. They'll okay. look him up. Probably right. when he buys the FP Jean as well. <laughs> <laughs> Spendy episode. Wow. Uh, okay, so that, this has got the uh, the ice blue dial, which is stunning. It's got that diagonal motif sort of on honeycomb-y it. honeycomb almost. Looks like mm. a... Yeah. Uh, exclusive. Rolex use it exclusively for platinum models, so it's special. For that flex. For that flex. So you can, if you see this dial on a watch, it is on a platinum watch, and it is a heavy... Yeah. Heavy guy. Yeah. Do you know, I've seen uh, one of these fairly recently for, on, a, on a, the wrist of a gentleman. It was the day date, smooth bezel, black dial. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It, and I, I think it's like, the, if you know that mm. blue dial, you know that's platinum and you know, whoa, well, that's a serious watch, which might which might be a good thing. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, most people think, oh, yeah, that's a Rolex. But, you know, your banker thinks, well, that's a nice Rolex. Let's get that line across. Exactly. And the black, it's just, wow, it's so stealth. It's, it, so it's, cool. it's ultimate because it could be stainless steel. You could be, oh, maybe it's well, not gold, a day But yeah. I know it can't be, but yeah, general yeah, people yeah, off the street yeah, might yeah. go, oh. Uh, so I think that this is an absolute knockout. You can wear this daily. Like you can do everything. 100%. 100 yeah. meter water resistance. It's got the caliber 3255, I think, which is a 70 hour power. So the, chron- the chronogy escapement thing. Yeah, the little diagonal escapement thingy that yeah. gives it extra power. Yeah. Uh, and it's a Rolex, and it, you know what? He can wear this till the day he dies. Like this is all time, all time. Not to not to get into dance territory, but this is an exit watch. This is so almost the exit. Now, I don't just come bringing you know expensive news. <laughs> the The second part of this is if Wing says no, ninety thousand is just ridiculous. Yeah, fair fair call, Wing. I'll tell you what, Wing. Why don't you get into a white gold uh-huh. date eight forty uh-huh. black dial like you just mentioned? Uh-huh. Go, go the fluted bezel. Yeah. And jazz it up with some diamonds. What sort of diamonds? Baguettes? You baguettes. Get baguettes for that? Yeah, it comes with baguette markers. Nice. That mm-hmm. is good. The, the subtlest of the diamonds. Yes, yeah, so it's subtly, you know. Is Wing a diamond boy? Well, he is now. <laughs> uh, so that's 61700 Well, that is under budget. Andy Gregg. So, look, that's the... Uh, Slumming it. Uh, he knows his options now. Yep. If, he's a, if he's a real baller, he's going to go the platinum. Um, <laughs> settle <laughs> if on he the, wants uh, to wimp out and go the white gold with diamonds, he can do that, I guess. No one's going to judge him. Andy will. When was the last time you bought a platinum watch, Andy? Last week. All right. Yeah. This is seventh. <laughs> I only wear platinum exclusively. I really <laughs> dials or nothing. But I think that this, if you, yeah, that you're not losing. Like you're just gonna love this forever. Mm-hmm. And it's a classic. It's a time, you know. I feel it's quite unfair that you've thrown this in the mix. It's well, it's the it's the the nuclear bomb. It's a bit of a. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And he's got that bigger wrist, so the 40 is going to wear better. I know sure, that sure, sure. ethically, I think that a day date belongs in 36, but you know. Yep. 40s we, are great. I think 40s are We all make compromises. Fun. All right. What's, what is, is this your last option, or you just got. One more. Okay. And this is completely left of field. Is it? And this is what happens when I have spare time, you know? The idle hands are the devil's work. Sure. Uh, so. I just watch Netflix. You research expensive watches. <laughs> I'm just, oh, yeah. oh boy. This is a Hublot Big Bang King Gold on the new bracelet. The integral. The integral. Ah, nice. Intense. Banger. 73, yep. 200 Aussie dollars. Is that over budget? No, it's under. No, no, it's in, it's in there. It's a 42 millimeter case. Lovely. Uh, it's a mixture of satin and polished 18 carat King Gold. Yep, that's 
special words for red gold. For King Wing. Yep. Uh, it's got those titanium screws on the uh, on the bezel. Don't say win, Wing King. Wing King. Because that's... Uh, so the titanium screws, it's got those, I guess, composite, rubbery, plasticky... Um, Polymer. I- Composites, yep. uh, pushes and crowns. And that no, sort the stuff. pushes, the pushes are metal. I think they're sort I of think the ed- end of them. I think they've toned down. Oh, yeah, the little caps. The pushes yeah, are metal. Yeah, yeah, it's the caps. Um, little bits and pieces. self winded chronograph with the flyback movement. Get that Hublot look. Yeah, 72 hour power reserve, 100 meter water resistance. It's that newish brace. I think it was November last year. No, nah, Dubai Watch Week this year. Jan. They dropped it. Whoops, yep, Jan. Sorry, guys. No, it's okay. Legitimate heavy hitter. And obviously, <laughs> it's got that uh, skeletonized dial. Yeah, that classic Hublot look. I think Hublot's a bold choice. Do you think we can do it? Oh, I think you could if you want it. Yeah, okay. It's not classical. It's not uh, It's not expected. Yeah, and I, th- I think there's that, I mean, it's certainly in that, that watch community, I think Hublot is, you know, sort of coming around in a lot of people's minds. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's some time where they're maybe too prolific on the limited editions, too many sort of weird out there partnerships, but this is undeniably an attractive watch. It's a good looking piece. It's... You know, it's it, mm-hmm. uh, it meets the criteria on paper. It nails the brief. You know, it's uh, even in budget. Would it would it be something he wears for forever ever? Uh, probably not when he's well, seventy and his eyesight goes. But I mean, honestly, he's got he's got a bunch of other watches for that. As well. Like, I mean, this is a fun, you know, sort of do anything. Is it under the radar though? No, well, no. You know, he sort of said that little. No, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty out there, isn't it? Yeah, it's 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 out there. Yeah, okay. This is tricky. It's tough, right? Like that's still a very it's a substantial watch. Okay. Well, I think we've got to go through the selects. What do you do? You want to tell me which one of mine? I've got to think about yours. I'm still not not sure. Okay, so we'll recap yours. The Langer. Yep. Odysseus. Yep. Urban Jorgensen. Urban Jorgensen one GMT. GMT. Double the time zones. So two blue dials, and then we had the FP Azure Octa Sports ARS two. Yep. Black or yellow. Black or yellow? Probably black, black's more under the radar. The yellow's like, you know, Porsche yellow. You know, I, you've been saying this the whole time. It is, it's a really hard position to relate to because I don't have that much money and I don't know psychologically what I would want to connect with, with for yeah. such a long period of time. Like if I'm thinking this is a big amount of money, this is yeah. going to have to be with me for a long time. But I think that the Langer, if you can, if you can make that work, I think that's, a, that's the best one you've put forward. If he'd mentioned that he had a stable of independence or he wanted to go down yeah. that independent route, the Urban Jorgensen, I think, is... I think the Langer's in that, that realm of, like, big... Bre- like, you're talking, if you're talking PP, AP, Rolex, Amiga, Langer's the neck, like, you know... So it's- the dichotomy, would you say, between the two? Well, I mean, it depends. Like, I think if you... I think reading that email and looking at knowing a, a bit about Wings Watches, he's sort of like a brand guy. Mm. Like, I think Jean could do it. I think Urban Jorgensen's a bit too out of the park. Mm. But that Jean though, like, is that the Jean for him? Funky Jean. That's a bit too. Is that funky? Did he? Yeah, mm. yeah. I think you're right. I think from from mine, I think you're right. And I mean, yours, I'm struggling with because, uh, if I'm honest, I'm gonna the Rolex is the one, but I'm gonna take it out because it's too. He said explicitly not interested in Rolex. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna take it out. Like, it's I don't think that's it's that's the fair. easy it's, choice. It's too. It's not he fair. He didn't that, need I mean, to come to me yeah, to hear. Yeah, that exactly. This is the watch I mean, like. yeah. I mean, he's you know. And then you've got, so you've got the King Gold, uh, the Hublot Big Bang, or the mm. Avacheron Constantin Overseas self winding Ultra Thin with the boutique only grey dial. They are very, very different watches, aren't they? Oh, they're... Chalk and cheese. Precious chalk and precious cheese. <laughs> very expensive. Yeah, I'm cheese. going to go... I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. I don't have an answer for this. It's the, I'm going to go the Odysseus. <laughs> I think across the board, uh, at that price point, there's so many options and there are so many, yeah, so many ways I, I, to go. And they're just, they're two, like it's, it's a very different... Actually, no. Again, nailing the brief, Vacheron. Yeah, bang. I think that that's it. I mean, he a bit understated. You Super. Know, daily. I mean, the, the Hublot, I don't think, is a, is a big boy for daily. So. It's too big. I tell you what, though. Someone sees that Vacheron. They'll see the boutique dial. They'll go, that's only, you know, that's a special dial. That means that's a special watch. Yep. They'll know that it's white gold. They'll see that it's the ultra thin and it's... Yeah, it's, the, the cred is there. It's the cred will go off And those it's guns. versatile. And then for everyone else, they're not going to know. And if he wants to play pool or wear it to the gym... Brave, but throw it on the rubber strap. Like, you can do that. You can put it on yeah, a yeah, that yeah, comes yeah. with it. You can easily... Natural. Done. Deal. That's it. And I'll haggle for you and get that $100 off so you don't spend a hair over $80,000, Wing. Get it, Wing. Yeah, we'll get that to happen. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Well, this was a fun... This was... All can I just it. say, 
Fun don't stop. I've got one more. What do you got for me? Dan. Oh, Dan. So what did we throw up for Dan? Uh, all right, let me go through. I've, I've just pulled up the messages. Uh, the lovely Blue Polaris. JLC, yes. Yep. Uh, Panorama. Whatever uh, the reference was. Uh, the Submersible, yeah. Yep. Uh, what else did we do? We did the uh, Cartier Santos in steel, maybe two-tone if they can manage it. Perfect. Uh, Ploprof, uh, the Rainbow mm. Brightling, and a bunch of the Amiga Seamaster 300s. You, we, I think we ended on two-tone. Two-tone, yeah, yeah. All right. What did Dan have okay. to say? Here we go, Dan. Dan, Dan, Dan. Can't wait to hear you think. Ha, you've done well. Always love the Ploprof. And that new Brightling Rainbow gets me going. Wow. But. Ooh. I'm thinking Cartier. Oh, who put that forward? You did. I don't want to do this. Okay. But I put all of those forward. Yeah, you did. All right. <laughs> three for three. Okay. Uh, to be fair, I know. I think I know Dan a bit better than you. Uh, I spent a bit more quality time with him. Um, and he's got opinions. But he says, I'm thinking Cartier because he has seen the just released uh, Mechanical Santos Dumont. Yep, the EXL, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he thinks that's that's a, a killer option. He loves so. that. It's got the pointier crown, that classic sort of... Uh, a bit of a thinner bezel as well. Yep, and it's a bit bit dressier. So that's what he's thinking, but I think the, the Santos is definitely in the mix, though he's he's followed up saying, unless the Breitling retails for under 7,000, but I think they're over 10. I'm like, the good news, it's under 7. Bad news, you can't get one. You and me both, Daniel. We both missed out. So I think that was a really successful one. I think that's a... I'm, I'm, I think the Cartier was a clear winner there for, for, for Dan, and I think he's validated that. I think he has. All right, that was awesome. That was good. Thank you. Cool. Uh, what if someone else wants to have the Dan wing treatment? Yeah, the special bespoke uh, experience. Email us at, at uh, otthepodcast yep. at gmail.com or Instagram ot.podcast. And if they want to follow you personally and read up on your coffee and car mm-hmm. situation. At Andy Green Live. What about you, Felix? Uh, I don't drive, so it's just coffee, and that's FK Schultz. Perfect. Well, thank you as always to Magiton Media for putting this all together for he's, us. He's a man. He does, he does the heavy lifting here, let's be honest. Yeah, he's, he lifts heavy. Yeah. Explains right. those biceps. All right, well, guys, we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. We're out. Boom.